right, so it's a beautiful day here at Gray Whale Cove. Uh, haven't painted here in quite a while. I'm here with Sophie and Tad, and we're just gonna try to do some more quick studies. Uh, so I've got some 11 by 14 panels, uh, thinking of doing, you know, like 30 minutes or less. The waves are pretty big today, um, so lots of dramatic action out there. But I'm gonna try to, you know, uh, use these rocks here in the foreground and then maybe push these rocks into the distance using uh, some atmospheric perspective and then kind of focus on some of the shadow patterns on the water. All right, so I've been painting for about five minutes. Uh, at this point, I've just got the major shapes in place uh, so I can decide if I like the composition or not. Uh, a lot of the areas, like say in here, this is just left over from the previous painting. So, uh, you know, so things can move pretty quickly when you're painting over an old painting. I do like the composition, but I'm feeling like there's just a lot of sky. So I'll probably, you know, start uh, with the lighter sky at the horizon and then kind of gradually make it darker I'm coming in hot here All right. I like that it's just simple shapes at this point so you've got uh, is this rock that rock right there the closest yep. one, yeah okay cool nice awesome we'll see how it goes yeah that's sort of similar to what I'm doing kind of working with these rocks and then right. the shadows right there right. actually I was just thinking like one of the challenges is I have so much sky here, here. were you thinking that thinking same, thing? same thing and I'm thinking, it's like, what, what are you gonna do with that? Do? Yeah, yeah. So but I think maybe, maybe put some clouds or some clouds. You know? Or what I was thinking, what I was thinking of doing is just, you know, if you look out there, it goes from like say a cerulean up to an ultramarine. Yes. So just have it like, you know, just work with grading the sky. Yeah. So it makes it more interesting, obviously. Yeah, yeah exactly. So that's what I'm gonna try. Uh, it'll be interesting. Yeah. I'll come over here and if and I'll copy what you're doing. Yes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I've sort of mixed up a warm gray here using uh, some yellow ochre, titanium white, and uh, dioxazine purple. I want to make sure that these rocks here. Uh, you know, there's like a sense of separation from the rocks in the foreground. So the rocks in the foreground, I'm painting a little bit warmer, you know, a little bit more yellow in those. The sense of depth here is going to be fairly delicate because the rocks are close together. Uh, so I'll probably exaggerate the atmosphere, especially right, you know, closer down to the water line. Mix in a little bit more titanium white. Maybe I'll exaggerate that effect just to see what it looks like. And when I do this sort of painting, you know, it's really fun to just, uh, you know, experiment, not worry about the painting turning out. I'm, I'm just trying to focus on, on making discoveries and learning and getting out of my comfort zone. All right, so that does feel like there's a bit of atmosphere there and a bit of separation. And yet it's still dark enough that it stands out against the sky. Um, obviously these shapes are really simplified at this point, but um, like I said, that atmosphere or that sense of space between these two rocks is something that I was attracted to, so I, don't make, I want to make sure that I, you know, can make that happen. Okay, so for the sky at the horizon, I'm mixing up a yellow mixture using yellow ochre, ca uh, cadmium yellow medium, and titanium white. And I'm going to exaggerate the yellow in the sky for now. I can always come over it later and either lighten it up or shift it in whatever way I feel it needs shifting. All right, so now a mixture of titanium white and uh, phthalo blue. 
which will give me sort of a cerulean color. I gotta be careful not to blend these colors because then it'll sort of turn into green and I don't want that. I've got cobalt blue on my palette today. Maybe I'll try mixing in some of that to see what happens. That's a little bit too dark, so adding some uh, titanium white. All right. I love the saturation you got. That's one thing that I'm struggling with is that I'm getting, uh, my colors are just not, they're very gray. Oh. And uh, so this is inspiration to really push it, like especially oh, cool. like those viridians in there. Yeah. Nice. Thanks a lot. Uh-huh. Nice saturated colors in there. I was just talking to Tad about that. Like my colors are very gray. I like these purple, White. you know, purples in here. And also you've kept the shapes very simple. Yeah. You know, just which which I also like a lot. I love those sort of minty greens in there too. Yeah. That's really nice. This to me feels desert. I, I cannot quite get. I well, don't... one thing I noticed is that if you compare the light portion of the rock to the sky, yeah, the light portion is still darker. I know yeah, it's the way light out portion. there. Yes, yes. So it's like maybe it should be a little darker, maybe. Well, one thing you might be able to do is like, instead of making it lighter, make it warmer. That's true. Do you know what I mean? Although it looks really cool out there, you know, like the yes. light on the light on the rock looks cool. I don't know. I'm struggling with that as well. Yeah. If you figure it out, Oops. let me know. Sure, <laughs> so will. <laughs> so compositionally, uh, I kind of am having a problem with this right here. There's a bit of like lit up sand right in here. I just don't think it works. For the composition it'd be nicer to have just like a simple light light shape here just wipe that out using some titanium white with cadmium yellow lemon for my brightest uh whites i think that's better so yeah that was just too distracting all right so tad went with the vertical format wavescape waves are kind of backlit so there's quite a bit of light coming through, which is always really beautiful. Next, I want to kind of soften some of these edges. There's motion, so I want to kind of blur those lines. Also, I want to raise the water line here to push this rock back into the distance a bit. For the white water in shadow, I'm just using ultramarine and titanium white. This brush is a number eight natural bristle, and I can't be too careful with it. It's kind of a blunt object. <laughs> That's one of the things I like about natural bristle is that you just don't have the control. You won't be as careful. All right, so that looks, I don't know. I feel like maybe even having this kind of come up a little bit. I just want these the water line to be irregular. Maybe even over here too. Go. that's a little better I kept messing up with this guy and I thought okay that's it that's oh with this rock right here yeah I, I just have it's so hard because there's reflected light on it uh -huh. and it's trying to get that value correct it's really yes. tough yes. but there's really a beautiful light effect going on right here which is right. your center you know right. that's where the eye is drawn so just nice clarity and light and uh, yeah. atmosphere very cool thank you So here's what I finished up with. Painting over old paintings is a great way to experiment with paint application uh, and composition. Uh, but one of the things I miss is the um, transparency I can get in my darks. And then also I miss those little pops of burnt sienna that I get from toning a blank canvas or blank panel uh, with burnt sienna. All right, so a few days later, I decided to go out and do some more 30 minute studies. Um, this one is a 16 by 20 that was painted over a blank panel that I toned with burnt sienna. Kind of went back to my original approach to painting. Uh, and so you can see I was able to maintain some transparency here in the darks. And then there are also little bits of burnt sienna popping through um, from the tone panel. And so I think I was able to get more uh, like a better feeling of luminosity in this painting. Uh, because of the transparency and those bits of burnt sienna popping through. 
but I don't think I would have been able to paint this painting had I not done a bunch of those 30 minute 11 by 14s, you know, painting over old paintings. It really loosened me up. It made me paint faster. And what I'm finding is, is that in order to sort of create a sense of motion and energy in the water, uh, it really helps to paint quickly. I think it was also a helpful painting on the larger panel. Um, that allowed me to have more room to swing the brush. I know I've talked about that before, uh, but the 11 by 14 did feel a little bit small. So yeah, I think I'm gonna do some more 16 by 20, 30 minute paintings, uh, having so much fun doing these. So I'm gonna keep doing them. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments if you'd like to see some extra videos and help support the channel. There's a Patreon link down below. I will also put links to uh, Sophie and Tad's Instagram down below as well. So uh, be sure to visit their Instagram. Thanks for watching. I'll see you and stay creative. And I'll see you guys in the next video.